So, nice to see you again. It's Graham Martin, the recruitment guy, with another five minute careers interview. So, we're here today with Natal Natalie and Natasha. Is that right? That's correct. And these lovely ladies represent Enfield Funeral Directors. We're actually a funeral director's business in Enfield Town to try and find a little bit more about what it takes to become a funeral director or a funeral arranger, as I've now understood the uh, majority of people in the business are actually called. Uh, and what every day is like. So um, let's start with Natasha. So you've been in the business since you were 16, is that right? Yeah. And what attracted you at the age of 16 to decide that you wanted to get involved in this, uh, the business which sadly affects all of us at some stage in our life? Um, two things mainly. Mm -hmm. One is I had an interest to see what happens after you pass away. Yep. Um, and secondly, was to helping people. Right. And I do understand there's a lot of this which is about customer care, helping people at the most difficult time. Would you agree, Natalie, that oh, that's yeah, a definitely. really, really yeah, important it's thing? it's quite a rewarding job that when you do help people fall through their bereavement and yeah. their grief. So how many funerals might you get involved with a week at a branch like this in a, in a busy Great um, London. It varies really, town. but we probably do about 100 funerals a year. So two a week, from, typically? From the shop, yeah. So what do you do in the business then? I basically help the family, group the family from the moment they walk in the door yep. until, and complete it until the funeral finishes, i.e. Um, help them choose a coffin, do the pricing with them, helping them arrange their flowers, um, and basically supporting them through the whole process and the legalities that are involved in it all as well, uh, the cremation papers or the burial orders that need to be done. So let's be clear, when people come to you, it's not as if they're about to get married or they're having a baby, which are very happy, uplifting times. These are to, to celebrate and to coordinate the, the end-of-life celebrations for, for one of their family members. So for you then, Natasha, what's been the best bit of your job? I think it's the relationships that you build up with the families during and after. Um, most families come in um, distraught, they're very upset. Um, by the end of the funeral process, they leave smiling. So for you, that's real kind of yeah. sense of you've done a great job, sense of satisfaction. Yes. What's the worst bit for you? Probably dealing with their grief. It's very difficult. Um, we may work in the business, but we still have emotions ourselves. Yeah. And it's very upsetting when someone comes through the door who is, you know really emotional because it's not always about people in their 80s 90s no. it's people that are that are younger um, children children babies, babies yeah. people that committed suicide yeah. people that have had an overdose yeah. people that have had an accident and so forth yeah. now before we started filming this uh, you told me natasha that you've been the individual that's had to i know there are lots of different aspects of this work but you've been driving the uh, the private ambulance or the, yeah. the black yeah. vans yeah. and uh, you will then go to the care home or the hospital or even a situation where upon you arrive when somebody's committed suicide and... Yeah. Tell me a bit about that. That's, um, yeah, that's, that's walking into completely different scenes each time. You never know what you're going to expect. You will have a phone call to say someone's passed away at their home. They don't tell you how long they've been there, mm -hmm. um, how old they are. So you're driving you're out in. and you're walking in completely blind. Yep. You often don't know the situation, you yep. don't know the circumstances, the family yep. or anything. So how do you learn to deal with that? Because it sounds to me a bit like a, a police officer or maybe somebody who's a paramedic turning up to first on scene. Well, you're not going to be first on scene because somebody's rang you, but nonetheless... Yeah, you still don't know what you're walking exactly, into. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You, you don't know what you're walking into, but... The point of working in a funeral director is you, you, most of the time you're not going to know what your day is going to be like. Um, you don't know who's going to walk through that door. You don't know who you're going to pick up. You know, you just mm. you have to go. And do you get counselling or do you get support or is it like learning on the job and you were mentored by someone? No, yeah, we support yeah. each other, don't we? You do. Yeah. So Nothing you, you talk about you. a lot, yeah. yes? Yeah. So probably the two of you have quite a bond because you've had mm. yeah. a lot of conversations about this. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Now you have, uh, I think we call it the, uh, is it the uh, conductor That's who's correct. the individual who mm. is at the front of the cottage, which is the row of, uh, of yeah. vehicles, and it, often you walk for the first couple of hundred yards or however long, mm. and then you jump in the car, That's and then you, you're first person out the other end, and you're the liaison with the... Uh, we liaise with him as the funeral leaves here. Yeah. We hand everything over to him, all the information regarding the families, their wishes, if they um, family want to carry the coffin into the crematorium. He will have the, all that on paperwork that we've put together for him, yeah. so he knows everything that's going to happen 
and he will then meet and greet the family at their homes and take care of them through the whole funeral process. So in a funny way, it's a bit like an opposite party arranger. You know, you're yeah. there to do, make sure everything runs smoothly. And, yeah. You know, but once it leaves here, it's out of our hands. We just have to put the trust in our men that they do the job. But we do great handovers. Nothing yeah. would touch yeah. wood. Never had anything go wrong as yet. Now, what I thought was interesting, that yeah. not every funeral director actually has a, uh, a fleet of vehicles. We're going to go to Natasha now because your phone's just going. So do you want to step out for just one second? As you can see, this is a real live funeral director. So, I'll pop in here. Hello, Ren. So, you're dealing with the emotions. You're dealing with the situation. You're dealing with the people, the family. Now, I know that some funeral directors have got their own vehicles. Mm -hmm. You don't. No. You outsource them, don't you? Yeah, we source them in. There's lots of different people who own funeral vehicles. So, yeah. from the hearse to limousines to her sets, which is children's yes. hearses. Um, there's lots of different people that we hire them in from. So, so for example, I did see out some office the other day uh, a very elegant um, black carriage with black mm -hmm. horses, yep. and that was a very impressive yep. funeral. Yep. Um, and of course, uh, a friend of mine who's got a Harley Davidson says that when he dies, he wants to have his funeral on a Harley Davidson purse, a trike, and so forth. There are so many different funeral vehicles. Yeah. People have buses. Um, people have a funeral uh, bus. Tractors. Yeah, a tractor. You can yeah. have whatever vehicle you I want. If you're a farmer, you don't want to go in a normal exactly. limousine. You want something that's appropriate exactly. to your particular kind of industry. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's interesting. Whatever you guys want, mm. we will try our hardest. And, to get. and you, uh, you don't arrange flowers here, but you would outsource that. No, we we'll, we will arrange flowers with yeah. you while you're here. But you actually don't do it. No, we arrange it with a local florist, and then she will deliver it here. Should we let? Uh, Natalie, come sit down yep. again. Come, come on, sit Natalie. down again, Natalie. <laughs> by the camera. Just pop by there. So as you can see, this is a real live working funeral director. This is uh, not a studio situation. We really are here today with people doing the job. Now, we were talking earlier, weren't we, about embalming mm -hmm. and preparing people. Do you want to take us through that a little bit, Natasha? Yeah, embalming is done by a professional embalmer. Mm -hmm. um, Preparation can be done by any one of us too. And that's like you were saying, hair and beauty is getting yeah, to look good. Beauty, what so does an embalmist actually do? An embalmer, what do they actually do? An embalmer basically helps to preserve the body for a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, after death, the body can deteriorate. Yes. Um, we can't tell how they're going to deteriorate. They just have their own time. Natural body cells are going to break yeah. down, aren't they? That's yeah. basically like what people have died of as well. Someone's died of cancer, yeah. and obviously the body's already in a yeah. process that's broken down. Decompo decomposition, yeah. 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 So so an embalmer uses basically a fluid. It's like a preservation fluid. Yeah. And it just helps to give the disease... So they more. drain the blood and replace it they with do. this embalming liquid. Yeah, yeah, it just... It's a more natural look. And have you ever done that? I haven't. I have assisted. Yeah. Because it, that's my interest. Mm-hmm. Um, Everyone's got to have a hobby. Everyone's got to have a hobby. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> she hasn't. Um, but no, that's that's definitely one of my... So there are a lot of different aspects to working in a, a funeral yeah. home, and not everybody does everything. I choose not to touch the bodies or have anything to do with the bodies. Right. But that's my personal choice. And I Whereas Tash is more interested in that to... side of So it. you are actually here, as she would say, front of house, dealing with people. I know you do that as well. You do yeah. home visits. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's about the interaction with people, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Now, let me ask you this. What is the funniest thing that's ever happened, as far as you're concerned? Because I know we've got a little bit of dark humour going on here. Um, anything that amazes, amuses you? <laughs> uh, I think, to be fair, I think most people within the funeral industry have got really great personalities. And yeah. Have a really good. Well, sense well I really. Of humor. Uh, well, I'd say it doesn't amuse me, but when people come in and they're really grief stricken, and then once they've gone in the arrangement, we've done the whole arrangement, I do try to get them laugh before they walk out the door. Yeah. Come yeah. out with. I don't know, I don't know, you can talk about all strange things that happen at funerals and mm. songs they pick. A yeah. lot of people like them, um, always look on the bright side of life. Oh, yeah, I've been and, fine with that. You know, yes. yeah. do try and get the best out of them when they're yeah. in such a sad state. But, you know, by the time they leave here, they're like, thank you so much, thank you so much. And they're really thankful that you've helped them through that grieving process. So, so here we are, we're, we're three mm. white people living in North London. Mm. Um, a very, very broad multicultural area, as you'd agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, we were talking earlier that, you know, most funeral homes will actually deal with um, Protestant, Catholic, Muslim, Hindu, Jewish, Buddhist, yeah. and also those that want to come in that want a, um, is it called a uh, naturalist? What's oh, the humanist. No, humanist. humanist yeah. Yeah. Naturalist is when they take the clothes off on the beach, isn't it? Yeah. Beg your pardon. Yeah. So, no, you can go natural if you want. A, a humanist. So, a humanist uh, ceremony. 
might still be coordinated by the likes of yourselves. Oh, definitely, but always yeah. by us. Yeah, and yeah. we would deal with all the priests in the local churches for them. Yeah, we do. And all obviously, because we're local to Enfield, we do know all the local priests. So, um, if we're looking at getting into this business, um, I suggest the best bit is probably to go and talk to a funeral directors, yes. yeah. find out about opportunities. Now, I know we spoke earlier that uh, you know here you are. You left school at sixteen. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you can't do that these days. You've got to go to college or yeah. further education. Um, and you, you're sporting some very nice tattoos. Yes. Just want to show the I camera am. a little bit. I yeah, <laughs> look at that. So really, this is for everybody, isn't it? You don't need to be a middle class white person with a is, with a stuffy shirt. This is about real life people, yeah. isn't it? And as long as you can get along with people, um, yeah. you know, and can work with the public if you've got good compassion. Yeah, yeah. the ability to build a rapport. Yeah. Yeah. And there are apprenticeships available. I understand. There yeah. is. Obviously, one would need to go in and uh, talk to funeral directors. Yeah. If there's one thing in terms of the people that are interested, if they want to become a funeral director, what is the trade organisation or the site they should actually visit? It's, SAFE. Yeah, there's one called SAFE and there's one called the National Association of Funeral Directors. Right, yeah. So if they just type in NAFD, it will come up. And there's a, I think there's a link on it that says, um, do you want to work within the funeral business? Lovely, and okay. And read for it. And um, in terms of money, obviously you don't want to pry in terms of your own individual mm-hmm. incomes, but... If we're looking across the UK, trainees might be starting at 15 to 17, perhaps, that, yes, yeah? yeah? And is the sky the limit? You know, can you go on to run your own funeral directors, oh, Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Of course. So there's some decent money to be made in it. Yeah. Mm. But it's fair to say there are times when you have to, got to be patient yes. and you might be waiting because you're not doing a telesales job. No. You're not hitting the phones. No. You're waiting for the knock at the door on the phone call. But you did mention to me that you often attend um, you know, charity events, fundraisers. Yeah. We've had fundraisers here to work within the community. Yes. Mm-hmm. And get to know the local community, which are, we have done, haven't we? Yeah, we do. Well, I think you know people talk about family funeral directors, don't they? That they get known within the community mm. and so forth. Yeah, we do. Well, that's great. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. We've gone way over five minutes, but I thought it was important <laughs> that we cover as many aspects as possible. So, Natalie and Natasha from Enfield Funeral Directors, thank you very much. That's me, Graham Martin, the recruitment guy. Saying goodbye. Goodbye. That's fine. <laughs>